Hi there. So we're in the greenhouse today and I am going to be seeding uh, some experimental stuff right now. What I'm going to be playing with this year for the first time is growing uh, sweet potatoes from True Seed and I have a bunch of True Sweet Potato Seed that I have received from some friends in some seed trades and so this is going to be uh, just some planting out of some uh, trays of true sweet potato seed. Now I already grow potatoes from true seed and they are considered a difficult crop to grow from seed um, but I have had uh, quite a bit of success if you look at some of the other videos on this channel um, where we've grown out uh, true potato seed and uh, done really well with it. So Reed, I only got, so this is Reed's Bushy Bloomer. I've only got five seeds of it, so I'm gonna put one seed per cell. And the other thing about uh, the other thing about um, uh, true sweet potato seeds is, in theory, they are difficult to germinate. But Reed has been selecting his uh, true sweet potato seeds for good germination, and he's been sort of culling out the weak germinators. And so he's, he's felt like he's already seen a dramatic improvement in the germination rate um, from the F further, you know, the, the selected generations, you know, a couple years down the road where I'm going to put two seeds of this is Reed's Bushy Bloomer, but coming from Farmer Mike, and he gave me a little bit more seed, so I'm going to just double it up. Now, I have grown sweet potatoes in the past from Slips. Uh, the, my favorite variety so far that I have used has been the Purple Murasaki which is a Japanese purple-skinned, white-fleshed variety that's pretty widely available. Um, the variety of sweet potatoes that's widely recommended for northern latitude gardeners to use is uh, Georgia Jet, which I have grown and I don't like. Georgia Jet produces really, really low quantities of usable sweet potatoes. There are often like giant, ugly, cracked, semi-rotting sweet potatoes but they're huge and they're full of cracks and they're just really difficult to use in the kitchen let alone sell you know at market um so i really don't uh i don't i don't want to grow uh georgia jet anymore um now there's a really great blog by Telzing Andrews called Aster Lane Edibles and she is a gardener up in you know up near Ottawa, Canada and she has done a lot of work developing uh, sweet potatoes from seed and she's got a great blog about it which I will link in the description and she did use uh, Georgia Jet um, for one of her major parents in her breeding work and she was very happy with it um, but you know she's got to make decisions on very very early season uh, sweet potatoes because you know obviously the, up in Ottawa that's up there with the polar bears you know so um, she's got very difficult climate conditions and I think I've got a little more leeway down here in the States. So I'm going to just try and work with some, you know, a little bit maybe longer season material. But uh, 
um, not so much Georgia Jet because I just really don't like Georgia Jet. It's, you know, it's very frustrating, you know, to have sweet potatoes grow and think you're going to get this great yield and then you dig up all these giant sweet potatoes that are very almost useless, you know. So I don't see the benefit of growing a sweet potato that you can't actually eat. That's just me. Um, so I'm going to grow a little bit more with these bushy bloomers. So actually I found I had two different uh, types of bushy bloomer from, from Mr. Reed and then one from uh, Farmer Mike. So that's all kind of descended from the same material. So this is Mike's purple. Mike's purple. So this is going to be uh, Mike's Sandhill Purple Flesh Clone Mix. Um, I have never tried Purple Flesh Sweet Potato. They're not readily available that I'm aware of around here. I know that they've gotten popular. in various circles and they tend to be from uh, Asia I believe and then there's one that's been going around that's kind of that's been patented or whatever not a big fan of patenting but so there's Mike's purple and we've got reeds vining from Mike so the other issue I have with sweet potatoes is voles who love sweet potatoes so I am hopeful to find some clones that will produce like a nice, you know, bratwurst to ear of corn sized sweet potato. Actually, an ear of corn is a little bit on the larger side from what I want, you know. And then, uh, and then to have them like not like poke out of the ground. Because that seems to be when the voles find them is when the they start bulking up and pushing out of the ground, which is like a big problem with Georgia Jet because obviously the potatoes get enormous. And then they follow the potato down, which, you know, is also problematic. And then, you know, so then you'll have like this huge skeleton of a football shaped potato which is you know not ideal so um i'd really just like nice moderately sized personal sized sweet potatoes that don't reveal themselves to the to the voles so easily and last but not least Got Reed's Grex. So, if every single one of these seeds germinated, which would be kind of a surprise, that would be almost a hundred genetically distinct 
sweet potato seedlings which I'm not expecting that to be the case but that would be pretty exciting and then we'll have a bunch of sweet potatoes to evaluate at the end of the season okay so looks like we did make it to the end of the bat to the end of the seating before the battery ran out um, I want to just say a quick shout out to Mr. Reed and to Farmer Mike for providing me with these uh, true sweet potato seeds. I'm really excited about this project going uh, into the 2019 season and uh, you can't buy these seeds anywhere so it's really I'm really honored to have access to it. Um, so thank you Mike and Mr. Reed for uh, hooking me up with this interesting stuff. And uh, we will keep you guys posted as to how they do um, and how they germinate. And I'm really excited about it. So one more new project for Oxbow Farm in 2019. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great spring.